Hello and welcome back. Today we're reacting to some more Kurzgesagt. They just dropped a new one yesterday. It's called How This Bizarre Virus Killed 500 Million People. What's the virus? I don't know. Let's find out together. Few of the monsters that evolution created have been so successful at hurting us as the variola virus. Variola. For smallpox. The smallpox. The caused was so terrible and merciless that it compelled humankind for the first time to act truly globally. Smallpox it was, was one horrible. Of the greatest winds of our species over the ancient powers of nature, all made possible by cows. Is it just me or did the animation just jump like way up for this? Right? That's not just me. Dun, dun, dun. Variola is a virus, a tiny machine that only seeks to reproduce itself. Evidence of it has been found in Egyptian mummies and in huh. writing from India and China as old as 3,000 years. Wow. 1,300 years ago, smallpox killed up to a third of Japan's population. Jeez. By the 1600s, it was one of the major causes of death worldwide. In late 18th century Europe, it killed 400,000 a year. Wow. Every third person who went blind did so because of this virus. I didn't realize it was Even called the, the variola century, virus. A hot so. second ago in history, it still killed at least 300 million people. Smallpox is an abusive monster that returns over and over and over again, killing, maiming, and disrupting societies. Thank you, modern How medicine. How could variola be so incredibly deadly for so long? And how could we have forgotten its horror so quickly? In 2023, <laughs> we have short memories. Countries left where the living virus is officially stored for research in Kotzova, Russia, and Atlanta, USA. <laughs> which is so we give the two superpowers of the planet the the virus. Jeez, come on! What? To just destroy it? <laughs> is certainly a good idea because what could possibly go wrong? Let's say that, through an unfortunate series of events, the virus got out and you got infected. What would happen to you? Well, we're all immuni How immunized to it, aren't kills? we? Variola is highly infectious and catches a ride in small droplets you breathe in. Immediately, it begins to infect the cells that line your throat and starts killing them to cause chaos. Yeah, we all get immun immunized for to that, don't we? Your body into giving it a lift. I thought we did. Whenever cells in your body die a violent death, your immune cells immediately stream to the site of infection to help out. Makes sense. In this case, that backfires horribly. As immune cells begin cleaning up dead cells, eating viruses and killing infected cells, variola infects a crucial cell of your immune system, your dendritic cells, intelligence cells that gather information and leave the battlefield to get help. They enter your lymphatic system, a highway network that spans your entire body and connects hundreds of immune bases. In these bases, oh. your heavy defenses are activated and should be the last place an enemy would want to invade, but Variola wants to get here. Hmm. For about 12 days, the virus quietly infects civilian and immune cells, jumping from cell to cell, infecting more and more. It spreads like At crazy. Point, Their animation! And Variola starts its attack for real. Millions of viruses use the lymphatic highway to spill into your blood and organs, infecting your whole body. Their animation's Second, next level, this variola video. Variola is everywhere. But despite this global attack, your adaptive immune system is struggling to wake up. Your immune cells look for and use critical transmitters called interferons to mobilize the body against viruses. Interferons, as the name suggests, interfere, <laughs> significantly slowing down virus infections but also quickly activating millions Finally, of Finally, a name I can weapons. understand. But variola is able to deactivate interferons, which stuns the antivirus Ow. side of your defense system. Other systems would usually help, like the complement system, a sort of mobile mind hey, we learned about that can that. destroy viruses. But variola manages to shut this down too. And so, with little resistance, variola spreads everywhere and infects billions of your cells all over your body. Among the infected are your capillaries, the smallest blood vessels in your body, which die in great numbers. Oh. Capillaries? Death activates an immune cell that you really don't need right now, but that's attracted by death, the neutrophil. Mm. Oh, we learned about those too! Invaders, great and small, it's not very effective against smallpox. And even worse, neutrophils fight by vomiting deadly chemicals, which kills even more of your cells. Yeah, On they just fired that, indiscriminately. Fluids streaming from your blood vessels into your tissue. A lot of casualties. Your body, as first millions, then billions of your cells die, you get a rash that only gets worse and worse. 
Mm -hmm. Pus and cellular junk fills it up as your body swells up with hundreds of lesions all over your skin and inside, even on your organs. Man, that's got to really suck to experience. Viruses. Now, the critical phase begins. As you fight for survival, you burn up in a high fever. Thousands of battlegrounds drain your blood of fluid that streams into your tissue and organs. Mm -hmm. Blood clotting appears all over your body, while floods of toxins from dead cells build up and can cause organs to fail. Your lungs fill up with fluid, making it harder and harder to breathe. Yeah, this is a bad One time. Of two happens now. Either your immune system wrestles back control, heavy weapons have been dispatched, killing infected cells, cleaning up the thousands of infections one by one, killing variola wherever it can be found, mm -hmm. so you can slowly begin to recover. The immune system will forever remember variola, making you immune forever. Or you die. Probably a lot more likely to die, right? immune system's right? panicked reaction to the body-wide infection. About a third of people who contract smallpox don't survive. Mm. And if you survive, you're very likely branded by scars and may even lose your eyesight or hearing. Oh, jeez. For thousands of years, this terrible disease ravaged the world, leaving death and destruction, traumatized and maimed survivors. Until one day, humanity said, enough. Why don't we have smallpox anymore? Smallpox is one of the worst diseases Immunization shots! Woo. A murderous, family-destroying, life-ruining monster. There was nothing you could do for the infected, but people noticed that if you survived, you were immune. Mm -hmm. So out of desperation, they came up with the dangerous practice of variolation. Take scabs from an infected person that had a mild case of smallpox, let them dry out, and grind them to a fine powder. Then blow the powder up the nostril of a patient or scratch their skin with it. Ew. If things went well, they only got a mild version of smallpox gross. and gained immunity against the disease. Variolation I guess probably it's kind of effective, but it gross. in a part of the body the ah. virus wasn't prepared for, disabling most of its nasty tricks. And because the inoculation was left to dry out, that damaged the virus so it couldn't cause the full disease. Hmm. Unfortunately, 2 to 3% of all patients still died because they got the smallpox or suffered other diseases as a result of treatment. Still, it's a lot better than 33% unavoidable disease that people took the risk for themselves and 10 times children. more effective. I'll take that. spread around the globe while variola continued to kill millions. A victory over the virus only became a real possibility when scientists realized that it wasn't necessary to variolate with the real smallpox disease, but much safer to use material from cowpox, a variant that affected, surprise, cows. Huh. A truly yeah. revolutionary step, and only a few years later, this led to one of humankind's Did not need that animated. <laughs> vaccinations. Yes. The innovation was simple. Instead of using the real virus to train the immune system, use a related virus, cowpox, that was only mild, but also gave you immunity. Mm. Still, it would take another 200 years, countless individuals fighting the monster where they could, delivering vaccines to the most remote places on Earth. It's kind of ingenious, the world, actually. The disease ravaged on, killing over 300 million people in the 20th century <laughs> alone. In 1966, the World Health Organization decided that humanity had to come together in a final major effort. A global smallpox news network based on residents in hotspots was created, tackling local outbreaks of the virus. Cases were encircled, vaccines given, preventing further spread. I believe that smallpox, or was, or was it measles? Shoot, now I'm getting them mixed up. One of them is the first virus that we've ever fully eradicated. Smallpox only infects humans, so if we stopped the human transmission chain, we would starve the virus. The last naturally occurring infection was in 1977, and in 1980, just shy of 200 years since the first vaccine was used, smallpox was declared eradicated. Variola, the scourge of humanity, was, it was dead. This one. No more children would be killed by it, no more mothers or brothers or uncles or cousins. Think about it's that accomplishment of humankind. What incredible win this was. One of the cruelest, Think of how most impressive dangerous that is. monsters that has hunted us for literally millennia was slain by us apes with pointy needles <laughs> today we live yeah, in a time of enlightenment he's not wrong none of us alive today are haunted by the specter of smallpox this light is not natural it was set in the sky by the sheer will of humankind mm -hmm. wanting to be safe from the monsters haunting us but because we live without them we forget that they ever existed and that they are real yeah that's that true the diseases might reawaken or new ones might be brewing in jungles, wet markets, or laboratories, ready to strike us once more. 
we forget what an incredible gift vaccines are and how hard we had to battle to get them. Mm -hmm. We are still protected by the light, but it's cooling each and every day. And we owe it to those who will come after us to make sure it doesn't go out. We killed one monster. We can do it again. Yeah. This video was supported by Open Philanthropy. What a great video. I, I loved um, how they talked about its origins as well as kind of how we took care of it, right? Because it puts it into perspective as to how big of an impact this has had forever. Thankfully, we took care of it because I tell you what, that does not sound pleasant at all. Wow. And we have to talk about for a second, the animation in this episode. They killed it. I mean, their animation's always great. Don't get me wrong. Okay, it's always great. But it really feels like they took it from like a 9 to a 10. I don't know if that's just me. So let me know what you think, because I, I think they did a really good job there. Anyway, this was a great video. If you like it, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. I appreciate you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.